What's up guys, John here. In America, we have 33 million small businesses that employ roughly 61,700,000 Americans, which is roughly half of the entire US workforce. Now, what if I were to tell you that in the month of April, 43% of these small businesses were unable to pay their rent. Small business owners have the highest national rent delinquency rate. 43% of small business renters were not able to pay their rent in full or on time in April. But even stranger than that, to really look at the clear picture, because what's very strange is you turn on the mainstream media, everything is booming. The economy is booming, job numbers are really strong, inflation, you know, it's not that bad. We almost have it under control, but you know, the best labor market in 50 years, right? everything is great. But when you start to look at what's really going on on Main Street, not on Wall Street, but on Main Street, you'll get a clear picture of what's really happening. Small business owners are maxed out and increasingly racking up their credit card debt. Small business owners say they are struggling to compete with large corporations. I believe we're walking into a massive shift inside of our economy. And the easiest way to see this is paying close attention to what these large corporations are doing and what Wall Street is doing to prepare in advance of all the small business owners, of every single American that works for a small business. I'm going to show you exactly what they're doing to help you and position you for what I believe is going to be the biggest change ever in our labor in our workforce, in our economy, and in our world here in America. Please hit the like button, hit the like button, YouTube will share this content to educate the people about what's going on in America's economy. And if you'd like to fix your credit, we would love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any negative item on your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for Monday. Take a look at this. So. Small businesses in the U.S. are struggling. Small business optimism has dropped, to, dropped for a third straight month to an 11-year low. Sentiment is even worse than during the early 1990s. Recession and the dot-com bubble in 2000. Elevated interest rates and inflation have decreased consumer demand while driving up labor costs. These businesses are a major part of the economy, accounting for 44% of all of uh, America's GDP. And so when you look at this chart, and then you start to kind of connect the dots here. It's very, very fascinating. Because what I think is going to happen is 2024 and 2025 and 2026 will be very, very inflationary. It's going to be more expensive to eat, more expensive to pay utility bills, car insurance, home insurance, taxes, everything's going to be more expensive. But what we're going to start to see after that period is we're going to begin to see mass deflation where AI, tech, outsourcing, you know, automations are going to start to drive down costs at a radical, radical pace. And as this begins to happen, U.S. small businesses that are heavily dependent on foot traffic, heavily dependent on localized customers, are gonna to start to you know, struggle more and more and more as prices continue to shrink and they continue to go down and Amazon and these large corporations gather more and more and more market share small businesses are going to continue to struggle, especially paying local labor costs, you know, at 25 or $30 an hour, which is exactly where a lot of these cities are going to be pricing labor in two, three years. I mean, right now in California, fast food workers, they're getting $20 an hour, right? And they have a set expectation that every single year that number is going to be going up. And so when you start to kind of look at this, you start to follow the trends, you can see clearly what small businesses are going to be doing. They're first going to be you know, relying heavily on credit. And they're gonna to continue to do that for the next year or so. But as this all begins to have a ripple effect, it's gonna change everything we know about America's economy. One quarter of owners identified inflation as, a, as the single most important problem in operating their business due to labor cost and higher input up two percentage points from the previous month. Small business optimism has reached the lowest level since 2012 as owners continue to manage numerous economic headwinds. Inflation has once again been reported as a top business problem on Main Street and labor market has only eased slightly. Well, right now, bankruptcy filings in Q1 2024, they're up. This came out you know, about 11 days ago. A new report from Epic Bankruptcy shows that new bankruptcy filings during the first calendar quarter of 2024 registered year-over-year -year increases across the U.S. major filings. And what they've said is total commercial bankruptcies registered the largest increase of 894 filings in the first quarter of 2024, up 
up 43% from the 1325 total commercial bankruptcies during the same quarter in 2023, right? So the trend is continuing to move in a direction where we're gonna see more and more and more bankruptcies. I mean, look at this, for example, Sam Ash, a famous music store, they've been in business over a hundred years. They just filed for bankruptcy um, yesterday, right? Just yesterday. And it's not just them. I mean, you're seeing all of these very, very large companies with you know, liabilities north of $50 million that are filing bankruptcy, you know, within the last couple of days, last week, 50 million right here, May 2nd, 500 million, another one, one to 10 million, RX Discount Pharmacy, another 10 to 50 million. I mean, it's happening nonstop. You're seeing all these, you know, pretty decent sized companies filing bankruptcy, 1.2 billion a couple weeks ago, you know, one to 10 billion, 99 cents store, 99 cents only, uh, Joanne Fabrics, 2.44 billion. And this is happening so quickly, but what's what's the real solution here? I mean, look at this health center, uh, nine billion in debt three days ago, Rite Aid closing 520 locations. Well, this is what the solution is gonna be. We're gonna begin to see a lot of companies, small business owners, issue more and more and more layoffs, trying to do more with less. You're gonna see these business owners being overworked and they're gonna try to, you know, they're gonna do their best to hold on, but it's not gonna be enough because the only real solution is gonna be reducing expenses and finding ways to streamline operations. Just follow the smart money. You want real answers, follow the smart money, look what they're doing. This is office space, right? So you have Carnival, their lease plan, sell. They have Glassdoor, sublease. Amazon, they're canceling certain locations. You have Humana, uh, net lease, letting it expire. You have Yelp, letting it, they're subleasing Verizon, uh, sublease, they have GE, Philips, Expensive, Expensify, Microsoft Sublet, Dropbox, Meta. You have all these companies and they are reducing expenses as much as possible. I mean, why are they doing this, right? Why would they be doing this if the economy was going to have a soft landing? Well, because they're, they're freeing up cash. They realize that they're gonna see a struggling consumer, a changing economy, and they want to have as limited expense as possible. And so you see all these really big businesses, really big businesses, multi-billion dollar corporations, all looking to cut expenses. Meanwhile, small business owners are thinking that they're gonna be able to weather this storm. I don't think that's going to happen. What I think is gonna be happening more and more and more is we're gonna see this, this trend right here. So AI should be hugely deflationary over 25 years. Now, what they say here is sure over 25 years it's going to be deflationary but what they say is that this is actually going to start to ramp up much much more quickly i mean look at this article here from medium.com which is an entrepreneurial novel said once 10 years ago the actual efficient size of a company is shrinking very rapidly remember in the 1970s a company would need to have thousands and thousands of employees to make half a billion or a billion dollars worth of profit well now what we're starting to see is these tech companies are able to do a lot more with a lot less. The actual efficient size of a company is shrinking very rapidly. So the future of the world will be almost all startups. Like I think most of the world, most businesses will adopt a startup mentality in the sense that there will be small companies loosely coupled and connected to each other all through APIs and processes for their needs. I think we will see more billion dollar businesses built by four or five people and we'll save that size. They even go saying that I would go even further. So 1 million is definitely possible. And this is with a one person. Uh, why not a one person, $1 billion business? Maybe we are far from that, but there's definitely will be very tiny team companies worth a billion dollars. My friend Jeremy talks about this and it's excellent. And so what they're saying is a three employee billion dollar company. So imagine this, imagine that type of world where there's going to be, you know, hundred million dollar companies, $500 million companies, billion dollar companies run by, you know, two, three, four, five people, six people. What would this do to, you know, the amount of leverage that that company would have? They would be able to open up operations and they'd be able to open up opportunities in all these different spaces. They'd have all this excess cash to start entering all these different markets. And that's what I think we're gonna be walking into. It's gonna be the businesses that have the most expenses, the ones that cannot pivot are gonna be the ones that die the fastest. And the ones that have that flexibility, they're gonna be the ones that are able to be a little bit more agile, be more successful, be able to you know, take more risk. 
and be able to grow rapidly when most of their competitors are going to be shrinking. And they say that the culture within the AI startup, startup market is AI first, where the first instinct is to use autonomous AI agents as the first method to get the job done. And so they even talk about what this team will look like, which is very fascinating. They say CEO will be the vision, strategy, and drive growth, lead public facing marketing, also be involved in engineering, hands on, and coding. Will occasionally represent the company in public, but most of the digital marketing and sales functions will be handled by AI agents, which may replicate their likeliness. Product leader will most will work closely with AI agents to accomplish, collaborate with customers and team, construct roadmap, drive, develop, and delivery, or product, refine and reiterate and iterate, operational matter uh, leader, and manage marketing and sales automation, finance, supply chains, and legal functions responsible for company-wide AI agents and generate single source of reporting, ensure a smooth operations across all functional areas of the company, right? And so they're saying that they're expecting this within three to five years, right? So this is where we're moving as a society. And I saw this and I thought this is quite fascinating, especially considering that a lot of people think that this is decades and decades away. But in reality, this is probably you know, two, three, four, five years from now, we're gonna start seeing this, you know, this is gonna be normal. They say by 26, or 2026 and 2027, that we're gonna be able to, uh, you know, this is gonna be, this is gonna be mainstream. I mean, China's already moving in this direction now. Look at this. That, that's absolutely wild. That's wild. If they can do this with cars, which in my opinion, uh, building up a electric vehicle that is self-driving, that you know is operating as a rideshare, that sounds much more complex than you know someone working inside of a factory instead of an Amazon factory. And you're already seeing you know, Amazon; they already have 750,000 robots. I talked about this, you know, last year, October 20th, saying that. You know, I was shocked they bought 750,000 robots. They only have 1.2 million employees. So they're moving in this direction of heavy, heavy, heavy AI. And they're moving in, you know, in a direction as well with prime air and drone delivery. And what that's gonna do is also gonna be deflationary. So you can see the trend. It's gonna be reducing expenses, heavily leveraging technology, using AI, finding ways in which they can reduce expenses and gain more market share is gonna be the trend over the next couple of years. The localized small business that is heavily set in their ways, they're gonna be the ones that struggle the most because what are these large companies going to do when they have billions and billions and billions of excess profits? They're gonna find ways in which they can disrupt all other industries that were before, you know, kind of, you know, untouched. I mean, I think of like the local, you know, local mechanic. Think of these localized laundry mats and all these uh, local stores that people would think, oh, corporations would never enter that space. Look, when, when they start to kind of change the economy as a whole, they're gonna be entering all spaces. Everything is gonna get disrupted. So right now, I believe the key is finding ways in which, one, if you're a business owner, to reduce your expenses and put yourself in a position to be a little bit more agile. And two, is make sure you have access to credit. Make sure you have access to money so that, you know, as the economy changes, which it's, I mean, look at this, like 43% unable to make the rent in April, it's changing. As the economy changes, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you have access to money. You have access to a line of credit. So if you have any issues at all on your credit report, you wanna square it away now. If you have high interest rate consumer credit card debt, you wanna square that away now. If you have any type of issue, you wanna to try to square those financial issues away now because it's gonna be a lot easier to do it today than it will be tomorrow. If you have any issues at all in your credit report, you know, we'd love to help you at my company, greatcreditfast.com. That's greatcreditfast.com. If you have late payments, medical bills, charge offs, foreclosures, bankruptcies, repossessions, or any issue at all in your credit report, go to greatcreditfast.com. Click the link in the description just below this video. Schedule a free call for Monday. I'll talk to you in the next video.